Good morning, everyone. Thank you for uh, joining class today. Um, before we begin, can I ask Erin, uh, uh, can you please lead us in prayer today? Uh, we were able to hear every because it was very. All of you were able to hear it. Yes, no. Yeah, we did not. Okay, so maybe I thought there was some problem with mine. Yeah, Kiran, can you just uh, unmute your mic and speak something, please? I can hear it. I can just make sure that I can hear you clearly. Or anyone else. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. From you, it is audible. Just say something more, please. Again. Yeah, ma'am. Hello. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Erin, for playing. Um, sorry, we couldn't hear you, but uh, thank you for uh, playing. Okay, so. Uh, Yesterday, we looked at uh, the qualifications of a teacher uh, in the light of uh, all the similarities with uh, the priestly role in the Old Testament. Uh, and then we looked at, uh, you know, in, in a children's church or in Sunday school, uh, messengers and methods are needed uh, to proclaim the message uh, uh, to the children, to the empowering of the Holy Spirit, to, to communicate the gospel or to teach children uh, the good news, uh, the message that is in the Bible, the truth that is in the Bible, uh, you know, we require messengers and uh, effective methods, and we can only do this to the empowering of the Holy uh, Spirit. Okay? So we look at what a messenger should do to effectively proclaim the message, uh, today we look at uh, the methods a messenger should incorporate uh, to effectively communicate uh, the message in a relevant and a productive way to children. So we are going to look at the methods. Okay. Uh, so the methods would basically involve, uh, you know, choosing relevant topics um, for the entire year. Um, or what topic you would want to do in a specific season or for a couple of months, um, the children that you are teaching. And then we will look at how to prepare a, a lesson plan. Okay. So we look at basically first at uh, the first method is how to choose a topic. We choose in topics. Now um, uh, you choose topics uh, for you can choose topics for a whole year, maybe from January to December. Uh, or if you're following the school academic year, like we follow here in India, and we do the NPC as well in our children's church, uh, we follow the school academic year, which is June of a particular year, particular year to uh, March of the next year. So, you know, if uh, we're going to start in June of 2022, uh, we'll go right up till uh, March of 2023. So that is a one whole year for us. Uh, April, May, we basically give uh, the children holidays because we don't have children shows for them and then we're traveling, we're going out of town, out of country, and uh, we don't want them to miss out any topic, so we just give them a holiday during uh, those two months of uh, April and May, and we begin back in uh, June. So it's good to plan for a whole year uh, for each specific class or each age group. Uh, whether it's beginners or primary, uh, or, you know, or uh, juniors, inters, and seniors, good to plan the topics well ahead of time. Or also, you can plan the topics for each class uh, individually. So, how do you choose topics? You choose topics uh, based on their developmental needs of the children 
in that specific age uh, group. Uh, we've already gone through uh, with, uh, uh, many classes. We've studied about the developmental needs of children, uh, and we looked at uh, the spiritual needs, uh, what they are looking for, and what uh, we can uh, give them to effectively minister to them, or to teach them, or to cater to their specific needs and challenges. Uh, and difficulties or their wants in that specific age group. Uh, so let me just give you an example. For example, if you're going to be teaching uh, grade one and two or standard one and two, uh, children who are six or seven years, then basically we look at their spiritual needs or what they are looking for. Uh, you know, they, uh, they need to know that you know, God made everything perfectly that they are created special and unique, they are valuable to God and to others. Uh, God loves them, God loves everyone, their family, their friends, their neighbors. Uh, God knows them, uh, he knows their needs, he knows their wants. Uh, God hears their prayers. Uh, God is dependable, trustworthy and always good. Uh, there is a difference between right and wrong. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we also need to hear that, you know, sometimes uh, we sin. Uh, we choose to do things that are wrong or that are bad. Uh, Jesus came to pay for all our sins. Jesus is the Son of God. Uh, uh, because of Jesus, well, because of what Jesus did for us, uh, you know, we can live with him forever and we can accept Jesus as our Savior. So these are the few things I have mentioned when I was uh, talking about the developmental needs of children in this specific age group. It's there in your notes as well. So, you know, you can just take out these spiritual needs that just children in this age group uh, need, uh, and uh, they, they need to hear about these things. And then you can, uh, you know, likewise uh, choose a topic. So, for example, you know, your first topic can be creation. Uh, and you can talk about how God created uh, the world uh, in, in six days, what he did on the seventh day, he rested. Uh, then you can um, also talk about how he created everything perfect, in order. After everything he created, he said it is good. So, you know, you can talk about basically creation uh, and also how God created Adam and Eve, how they were different from the rest of creation. Uh, other narratives in the Bible that you can talk about creation is uh, Jesus steals the storm, uh, and you can talk about because uh, he created everything. You know, all creation is uh, you know, obeys him, uh, receives order from him, and uh, they do as he says. And uh, we can also talk about the power of his word. God created everything to the power of his word. So when God says, when Jesus says, uh, he still, you know, everything was calm. The wind stopped, the rain stopped, the sea was totally calm. And you can also talk about uh, the story of uh, Joshua, how God made the sun stand still so that he can fight the uh, battle and win the body anyway. So you can choose these narratives and then you can, you know, prepare uh, what are the objectives that you want to, learning objectives that you want to bring out to the store. Then also they need to hear that you know they are unique and special, they are valuable to God and to others. So they are unique and special. We can talk about how God created Adam and Eve, how they are different from the rest of creation, created this image and likeness. Uh, they are valuable to God and others. So you can talk about how you know um, uh, Jesus raised Jairus' daughter, uh, you know, uh, how Jesus uh, raised Lazarus from the dead, because Mary and Martha were really crying, they were sad. Uh, Israelites crossing the Red Sea, you know, how God made a way for them because uh, they were very valuable, they were, they were very precious, God did not want them to, to lose them, he did not want them to be taken back to Egypt as slaves or destroyed by the Egyptians who were following them. So you can choose likewise uh, narratives that talk about uh, how valuable they are uh, to God and to uh, others, okay. Then the next topic is about uh, that we need to hear is God loves them and loves everyone. So you can talk about the prodigal son, uh, Zacchaeus, uh, that God loved him in spite of him being a sinner. Uh, you know, Jonah, how God did not destroy the people in Nineveh uh, because God cared for them, he loved them. And also how God rescued the Israelites out of Egypt 
uh, then um, because she loved them and cared for uh, them. Then the other topic you can have is, you know, God knows you. Okay, so, uh, you know, you can choose narratives on uh, how God cares for their needs, He provides for their needs, He knows their needs, uh, and He will provide for them. So, just simple narratives for this age group, you know, feeding the 5,000, blind man Bartimaeus, God providing a mana and uh, water or uh, quail in the desert for the people of uh, Israel. Israelites, okay? So, you can just have these topics and then you can think of uh, narratives in the Bible that will best uh, fit into these topics. Or the next topic that we need to hear is God hears our prayer, uh, how God protected baby Moses. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, when uh, they made the basket, they put him in the basket, put him in uh, the river Nile among the weeds, and, and I'm sure that they were, you know, uh, his mother, uh, his mother, Aaron, father, and uh, Miriam were also praying for him and how God protected baby Joseph, uh, sorry, baby Moses. Then uh, we could talk about Jehoshaphat, you know, when uh, the three kings came to attack uh, Jehoshaphat how the people went to the temple, everyone, women, children, they all cried out to God and how God heard their prayer and protected them. Uh, Jonah's story, you know, how Jonah prayed in the way, uh, the, uh, the belly or the stomach of a whale and God gave him a second chance and uh, how the people of Nineveh repented and God heard their prayer and forgave their sins and did not bring about the calamity that he wanted to bring on them or the destruction that he brought on them. Then God is dependable, trustworthy, and always good, which is another next topic. Uh, you can talk about uh, Abraham and Sarah, how God uh, made the promise and kept the promise, and he gave them a son. Uh, Daniel in the lion's den, uh, how God protected him. Um, so God is dependable, trustworthy, is always good. Uh, Joseph, how he sold up as a slave, but you know, uh, even though he was thrown into prison, but he becomes the uh, Prime Minister of uh, uh, of Egypt, okay? And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's uh, narrative. So you can just think of topics and then you can uh, also think of relevant narratives that will uh, fit in. The last two topics is, uh, you know, difference between right and wrong. So you can talk about Achan's sin, uh, Adam and Eve, how they sin against God, uh, Elisha, uh, Elisha's greedy servant Gehazi, uh, Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5. Uh, so, all of these stories with their narratives you can use to tell them uh, what is right and wrong and how God uh, does not like us when we sin, uh, what is disobedience, uh, even simple things like, you know, uh, like Adam and Eve, but sound very simple that they just ate the food, but such a big punishment. But for God's sake, it's sin. And then they need to know about, uh, you know, what is sin, that Jesus paid for our sins, uh, uh, because of what Jesus did on the cross, that we can, you know, we can live with him forever. And then talking about uh, how to accept Jesus into their life. So you can talk about uh, the whole uh, series of uh, uh, on sin and salvation. Uh, everyone has sinned, so you can use the, uh, the narrative of the woman caught in the act of adultery. Uh, God sees us in Achan's uh, greed and disobedience. We can talk about the cost of sin, uh, Cain and Abel's uh, sacrifice, uh, you know, uh, the punishment that came upon uh, Cain when he killed his brother Abel. And, uh, you know, Jesus is the answer, uh, Adam and Eve, for how they disobeyed God, but how God promised that he would bring about uh, seed through the woman. And, uh, you know, Jesus came and he died for our sins. And uh, uh, so these are some of the things that, you know, these are some of the topics for this age group. And likewise, you can plan and choose the relevant narratives uh, that will uh, kind of cater to these uh, children's needs. If you think that women caught in the act of adultery is um, something that you can't really explain to children grade one and two about adultery and all of those things, then you can choose about, you know, uh, another narrative that, you know, about that everyone has seen. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, you can uh, use that as your narrative or the story uh, for your lesson. And then you can bring about the learnings from 
that. Okay, so this is uh, basically for grade one and two. Uh, I have mentioned the, the developmental needs, uh, the spiritual needs, or what children in different age groups need to hear. So, as Daniel notes, so if you are planning to uh, a year for uh, topics for the year, then you can just go to the developmental needs, see what are the spiritual needs, and uh, uh, pick up those topics and uh, plan uh, or choose the narratives from the Bible from the Old and New Testament, and then you can start writing your uh, lesson plan. Okay. Now, uh, we need to, uh, because they're children, sometimes we think, you know, uh, uh, we can do anything or, uh, you know, just decide anything at the spur of the moment or one day before or Saturday. Uh, well, that does not really work. Uh, we know that uh, we learned yesterday or we saw yesterday that children are intelligent beings. They understand, uh, you know, we need to see them as able and fit uh, for uh, good planning. Um, planning well in advance, planning the lessons, planning the topics, uh, and not treating them as someone you can just do something with and, you know, just finish the task and go away that we don't do for youth ministry or for adult church. The same way we need to be sincere and diligent uh, for children as well because we're serving God and they're precious in God's sight and God wants them uh, to um, also hear and know the truth like we uh, look at in our very first lesson the biblical basis and mandate for uh, children's ministry. Okay, so we need to prepare well. There is no substitute for a well prepared teacher. Uh, you know, our classroom control will improve significantly uh, in most classes uh, when we prepare effectively. Uh, if you're spending adequate time uh, preparing, you know. Uh, uh, you will see the effects in the lives of the children. Uh, so to prepare adequately, you will have to spend um, uh, time, you know, uh, preparing well. And when you prepare well, when you prepare adequately, uh, you will see that, uh, uh, you know, there's a good productivity, there's a good yield, there is a good uh, harvest that you will, uh, uh, you know, that you will reap. Okay. You also see that children will begin to enjoy the classes, they will learn, they will basically receive everything that you're teaching them, uh, they will just soak in what you are telling them because you are well planned and when you're well planned when you've done things, you'll be sincere and faithful like we uh, heard yesterday, when we are sincere and faithful, God will uh, equip us, give us the creativity, the skills that we need and he will bless the work of our hands, he will uh, use it to transform the lives of uh, children. And we see that children will be motivated to learn. They will also be motivated to act upon uh, what they have learned. So why am I saying all this or why is this a repetition? Because uh, if you are planning for a class, a teaching class, say 30 minutes, uh, you will have to spend no less than two hours or two and a half hours preparing uh, for that 30 minutes to teach children. And you say, oh my gosh, two and two and two and a half hours, I think that is quite an exaggeration, that's too much, but uh, we will come to know, um, you know, as I bring out the various points, uh, that you would require this much of time, uh, you know, so much time uh, to prepare just for a half an hour or uh, 30 minutes uh, teaching uh, time, okay? So, um, to teach a 30 minutes class, you basically need to prepare for two hours or two and a half hours, okay? Uh, if the topic is a little difficult and it needs more detailed explanation, then maybe you have to spend more uh, time. Another important point is to remember is if you're teaching this Sunday, it's good to, be, to start preparing for your lesson, uh, you know, on Friday itself, the Friday of the previous week, um, or you can start preparing for Monday of this week, uh, you know, uh, uh, prepare a week in advance. Uh, why do you need to prepare a week in advance so that you know you have the, you know what the topic is, you know what the narrative is, um, and as you go through this entire week or you go through a weekend, you know the previous weekend, uh, you would uh, come across different incidents or you would see different things. You would. Uh, uh, you know, you look at different objects, uh, different uh, stories will come to your mind. 
and you can think, oh, I can use this to teach my children, or I can use this object, or I can use this game, or I, I can use this activity, uh, or I can use what happened recently in the in the news to tell the children, basically for the uh, children in the interest class, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, they uh, would like more relevant uh, issues uh, to be brought up, and uh, they learn very well through uh, you know recent relevant issues that have happened with sports people, uh, actors, uh, politicians, anything that has happened to people around the world. You know, they that is what uh, actually you know is uh, uh, retains in their minds. And that is what the children have told me when I have taught them in schools that you know when you tell us real life incidents, things that have happened recently, that is what really sticks in our minds. That is what really gets the lesson across to us or, uh, uh, or the objective of what you are teaching us. So it's good to you know prepare in advance. Um, if you're preparing a day or two, like for example, you're teaching a Sunday and you start preparing on Friday and Saturday, you know, it will not really be very effective, maybe. You can tell the narrative in a very creative way. You can bring out the learning, but children will get bored. But uh, you know, uh, you don't have very planned activities. You've not brought up good object lessons. Uh, then it will not be very effective, helpful, or beneficial. So the good thumb rule is, you know, to have a thirty-minute class prepared for two and a half hours or two uh, hours, uh, and prepare a week in advance, or maybe if you're teaching on Sunday. Uh, you know, start preparing on Monday itself. Okay. The third thing is, you know, it's important for you to write down everything that you are saying. So it's important to have a script, just like you have a script when you are preaching in adult church, or you have you know, a script when you're doing a seminar, or you're preaching or teaching uh, somewhere, you know, or uh, teach, uh, preaching or teaching with you, you have uh, basically a script. But for children, we basically think we can, you know, just narrate uh, the story because we know the narrative very well in the Bible. Just read the story once and, okay, this is what, and then I tell them, you know, you should be honest, you should be obedient, uh, you should not lie, uh, you should obey your parents, uh, you should not cheat, and all of those things. Okay, done. The lesson is done. But, you know, to be more effective, uh, there are a lot of things other than just this that children need to learn because they're fed up of hearing. Don't copy, don't steal, don't cheat, uh, don't uh, use bad words, obey your parents, uh, you know, uh, read the Bible, pray. I mean, they're kind of really tired listening to it. So, how, you know, best creative way that you can bring it about? Uh, how can you just uh, teach them through different uh, life incidents, uh, through different activities? Uh, it will be something that you have to think about and also write down specifically. Uh, you know, so that it will help you. Okay. Now, why is it important to write down everything that we say? If you look at our children's search curriculum, you can go to uh, you know our website and uh, you can find the curriculum there. Everything is spelled out and written from the objectives right down to the follow-up of the lesson. Entire thing, what they have to say is mentioned because sometimes when we teach. We can start off from, uh, you know, we can be talking about uh, uh, prodigal son and we can, you know, uh, move from Luke's gospel to, we can go to Genesis, uh, take the children right through the whole Old Testament and come right up to Revelation. Okay, so uh, for those of us who are good speakers, uh, you know, we can do that. But, you know, in, in the end, children will be very tired, they won't have got anything. Uh, so it's important that uh, you know uh, you have clarity what we're going to say, okay? Uh, what, how you're going to begin your lesson? Uh, you know, how do a recap of the previous lesson? What are you going to do a recap of the previous lesson? Just the basic points uh, so that it's short and crisp and you know uh, neat. Then what is the learning objectives? What is the attention getter? What is the learnings that you are going to bring about? And the application. Then the next important reason why you need to write down your own lesson plan is uh, to know exactly what are the important points you need to say in that specific, for that specific topic, for that specific lesson and narrative. Because in one um, 
lesson like just say for body to sun, you can talk about God's love, you can talk about God's forgiveness, you can talk about sin, you can talk about salvation, you can talk about choices. Uh, you know, there's so many things that you can talk about. If you talk about all of these things with children, they are not going to, uh, you know, uh, get everything. So it's important to just have one main truth. Like for adults, we basically have three points or maximum five points. Uh, for children, it's good to have just one main truth. I'll talk about that and then, you know, get them, get the whole lesson uh, you know, following that one main truth in various ways, bring about the learning of that just one basic uh, truth. So when you're writing down, you will know what are the main points you have to say, uh, what points are not necessary, what points you can use for some other topics that you have planned for the year. Uh, so if this topic, this lesson is just about love, you will just speak to love. Uh, talk about God's love because you know you're going to talk about forgiveness, sin, salvation, in other topics uh, in, in that year. Okay, so writing will also remove all the unnecessary things that need not be, uh, you know, put into the child's mind because you just have 30 minutes uh, of their attention or just 20 minutes of their attention, and you want to use that to the maximum to bring out the main truth. And also when you're writing down, you ensure that the main truth of the lesson runs throughout the lesson. I'll talk about the main truth in a little uh, while also. Uh, then you will also need to include relevant um, activities, what are the activities that you can include, the object lessons, um, uh, you know, how to cater to the child's, different children's, uh, learning styles and also their different intelligences or their ways of learning. Remember, we learned uh, the five different, uh, uh, you know, ways uh, uh, to their to they learn to their senses. So you can okay, how can they learn to their five different senses in this lesson? You can just look through. If there is something that you see, you can add in, uh, you know, to the lesson. Uh, you know, whether you are catering to their eight different intelligences or their way of. Um, learning. So once you also write down all of these things, you will know whether you have kind of catered to their learning styles, their intelligences. And if you find that the lesson is too long, uh, you know, the, the narrative is taking too long, the learning is too long, the attention getter, the object lesson, uh, the activity, teaching the memory verse, all of that is going to go more than a uh, uh, one and a half hours, then you will say, okay, now this lesson is too big. Uh, where can I, uh, where's a good point to kind of divide this lesson into two so that I can continue the uh, next class? Now, if you don't do write it down, you will not notice that the lesson is too long. All the activities that you have planned because you plan everything the last moment, everything is in your mind, uh, you know, so you never realize. Then you see, oh, it's already half an hour, time is up. I have not finished the memory verse, I've not done the learning, I've not done the application, I've not even given them the uh, activity that I've planned. Then you can say, okay, children will do uh, it next week. Now, what is the learning? What, how are they going to apply? You have no time to do that. So it's good when you write it, you know, uh, write the lesson plan, you know, where to stop with a good point. Uh, then you can say, okay, now I taught them in this whole narrative, I taught them this, so what is the learning I can bring about? How can I get them to apply? What is the short activity that I can do? Or should I do the activity now? Or can I do it next week because I have no time? It will just help you to decide all of those uh, things, okay? Uh, so there's no confusion. Uh, you'll have a good conclusion and the learning will happen and there will be a good application. And when you write all of these things, it will help you to handle the class very confidently. There will be no waste of time, there will be no confusion because you have clarity on what you're going to do. There will be a good flow and children will just flow into what you have done and God will just bless uh, you know, what you have prepared and will be very, very uh, effective. Okay. Um, so that is uh, about writing and preparing well. Now, uh, we'll look at uh, how to write a lesson plan and what are the things to keep in mind while you write a lesson plan, okay? The first thing when you start to write a lesson plan is to have 
the learning objectives or to write down or spell out the learning objectives. If you look at all the lesson plans in our children's research curriculum, the first thing we do is spell out or write out all the learning objectives. Now, what is a learning objective? Can anyone tell me what do we mean by learning objectives? What is the meaning of learning objectives? All of you in class? No answers? Okay, learning objectives is basically, you know, um, uh, clear, specific statements uh, uh, that as a teacher, you want the learners, uh, you know, uh, 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 what learners will be able to do at the end of a lesson as a result of the activities, the teaching, and the learning that has taken place. Now, learning objectives should be brief, it should be clear, a specific statements of what learners or the children will be able to do at the end of a lesson as a result of the activities or the teaching that we have given them and the learning that has taken place. It's basically what the teacher wants the children uh, you know, to learn or uh, you know, what the teacher wants the uh, children to achieve uh, by the end of the lesson. So it's just very short, very brief, uh, very, very uh, simple. Now let's take for example, uh, Zacchaeus' story, okay? Now, if we, uh, if you are to repeat Zacchaeus' story, then what are, uh, you know, some of the main truths that we can bring out from Zacchaeus' story? This is a simple question. I'm sure all of you can answer. If you think about Zacchaeus' story, uh, Zacchaeus' narrative, what are some of the main truths that you would like to teach on or bring out from this narrative? You can unmute your mics and speak, or you can type it in the chat section. All of you are familiar with Zacchaeus' exactly story? What are some of the learning objectives, or what's the main truth? Sorry, what is the main truth? that we can teach on from uh, Zacchaeus' story. No answers? Okay, uh, Dave says God came to save all of us. Okay, thank you Dave. Anyone else? Uh, faith, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, basically, you know, we can talk, uh, Zacchaeus was a very greedy man, he was dishonest, uh, he lied to people, he cheated people. So you can talk about uh, how to be honest, how not to lie, cheat, or not to be greedy, what we can do. Uh, you can also talk about sin, how sin destroys a person's life. You can talk about God's love. You know, uh, God came to Zacchaeus' house. He did not condemn him, but uh, how Zacchaeus changed. And then you can talk about true repentance, what is true repentance, how Zacchaeus really repented and how he uh, changed. Okay, and what happens uh, when uh, when Jesus comes into our life, how he changes us. Okay, so these are all some of the um, truths that we can teach on this narrative of Zacchaeus. But you, if you are teaching about Zacchaeus and you want to just teach about using this uh, narrative to talk about uh, sin, then you need to have that as your main truth. Okay, I told you I talk about what the main truth is. 
So you have to choose what is a main truth, what you want to bring out, or the main truth, or is the central point you want to talk about, you want to emphasize, you want to reiterate throughout the um, lesson. Okay, and then you keep that as the main truth. If it is love, you keep love, you just talk about uh, uh, revolve this lesson all about God's love and how He loves us in spite of us, uh, you know, uh, sinning. Even though people in, uh, in Zacchaeus' town did not like him, they did not associate with him, they did not talk to him, uh, but we see Jesus loved him. He made the point to go to Zacchaeus' house uh, and he did not condemn him. And God, he got, God, God loves us so much that He does not condemn us, He does not want to punish us for our sins. He wants to, uh, his love is so great for us that his love can change us. Uh, his love is so great that his love can cause us to, uh, you know, totally be changed and uh, be a new person, a different person, and do what is right. So if you have this main truth, then you will revolve your whole lesson or activities or everything that you want to do around this main uh, truth, okay? Uh, and you will also, you know, your main lesson objective will focus on the main truth or the central point that we want to bring about in this um, lesson. And you can also think about how you can use this main truth through various activities, uh, through various uh, object lessons or attention getter uh, to, uh, to focus on the main truth or to reiterate the main truth and how you can bring about the learning and also get them to um, apply, okay? So that is um, the main truth, and basically having this main truth will help you uh, to write the learning objectives, okay? Now, I'll just give you a couple, a sample of uh, the learning objectives. Uh, for example, uh, just say the first lesson that you are going to teach is uh, that Jesus is the creator, so your learning objectives could be something like that, uh, like this. Um, you know, uh, God created everything uh, we see. Uh, he created everything beautiful, perfect, and in order. Uh, you know, he created everything through his spoken word. Uh, God's word is powerful. Uh, and uh, he created everything through his spoken word. Because he created everything, all creation obeys him. So if you're talking about Jesus this the storm, then you can have uh, basically just these three objectives uh, or four objectives. Jesus is the creator. He created everything through his spoken word. He created everything beautiful, perfect, and in order. Because he created everything, all creation obeys him. Just four simple objectives. So you will think, okay, this is the four objectives, and this is what... I want to kind of elaborate or explain throughout this lesson and I want my uh, children by the end of this lesson to know that Jesus created everything. He created everything through his spoken word. He created everything perfect and beautiful and in order and all creation obeys him. So your learning will also revolve along this. Your activities will also be based on this. Now the uh, learning objective or uh, differs based on the age groups. If you know, if you notice here, uh, this is something, this learning objective that I just uh, read out, uh, the school learning objectives was, is basically, basically for grade one and two, uh, but for maybe for the higher grades, you would want to go deeper, so you have a different uh, learning objective. Okay, so the learning objective should be based on the felt needs of the children. Even your lesson should be based on the felt news. What the children are actually going through? What are their challenges? What are their needs? So once you, uh, you know, prepare the lesson or uh, you, uh, you teach them according to their felt needs, then the children are able to receive better. If you're just trying to, okay, tell them, okay, I'm going to follow like exactly what the Bible says, uh, Genesis, uh, God started with creation, so let's do creation. After that, Adam and Eve sin, then after that, Cain and Abel, and then, then we move on to uh, the Tower of Babel. So, if you want to follow the uh, sequential order of the Bible, then it's not going to really help them. Uh, but if you're going to pick out these lessons uh, based on their felt needs, 
uh, what they are going through. Like I just started this class by talking about the various topics, the, the spiritual need of children, grade one and two. Then the children are able to better understand, respond, and they will love coming back to uh, Sunday school or children's church to uh, learn. Okay, so uh, it's good that uh, you have these learning objectives. The learning objective should be based on the uh, topic, uh, you know, and also uh, should be uh, based on the main truth that you want to uh, speak about or uh, elaborate to the lesson and the felt needs of the children. So the first thing that you write out in your lesson plan is, uh, uh, you know, the learning objectives. The next is, you know, uh, you begin with the recap of the previous lesson. Uh, good to do a short, quick recap. So if you have planned everything in your mind, you've written down so you know, okay, these are the two main points. I'll just do a recap on very shortly. What am I going to say? And then you can connect it to the lesson that you're teaching. Uh, you can just move on to the next lesson. Okay, so we have the lesson objectives, the recap, and then we begin our main lesson that we are going to teach for today. Uh, we can begin with an attention getter. Now, the attention getter can be anything. Now, for example, you can use uh, objects as attention getters. You can use a quiz. You can do a skit. Uh, you can do a game. Okay. Now, for example, I'm going to talk about uh, prayer. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell them, okay, today we're going to study about prayer, and prayer is communicating with God. So that is a good introduction you, you could think of. But you can think about, uh, get uh, a creative attention getter to get them to think about prayer and what you are going to tell them about. Because, you know, uh, the beginning of the class, what you are going to tell them is going to either, you know, get them, get their attention for the rest of the class, or it's going to, for them to lose the attention for the rest of the class. So if you say, today we're going to talk about prayer, and uh, prayer is communicating with God, so we're going to look at how we're going to communicate with God. The children are going to say, hey, this topic is so boring. I, uh, prayer, I know, is just talking to God. It's, uh, it's just saying what I have to say. Okay, I'm not interested. I know it's about prayer. It's communicating with God. Finished. So please don't uh, start a lesson like that. You can start in a very creative way. Now, for example, uh, on the table, I have um, a, a phone, okay? I have um, a newspaper with me here. Okay, so this is a newspaper. Uh, so this is a newspaper. I have a newspaper. I have a phone. Uh, I have um, an envelope, an envelope uh, and some letters. And then I have a road map, okay? So I have a... Uh, a map here. So I have a map, I have a phone, I have an uh, envelope, an envelope, and then I have a, a, a newspaper. Okay, so basically I keep all of this on the table. Now we, learn, we know that children learn through their five senses of touch, uh, of moving around. So if you just get them to come to the table, just touch everything. Some children can even just smell the newspaper and things like that, those who learn to smell. Okay. And then you can ask them, what do you think the items on this table or if they have it in a tray uh, have in common? Okay. So what do they have in common? So what do all of these things have in common? Phone, newspaper, map, and uh, envelope. What do they have all in common? Any answers? They all help us in communication, right? They communicate something to us, and we can communicate the phone to the envelope. I can send a letter. The map uh, communicates to us the different places. Newspaper communicates to us what is happening around the uh, world. So we can say that all of these things displayed on the table are used to communicate with uh, each other. So you can say, do you communicate with your parents, your friends, your teachers? Yes, do you communicate with God as well? You know, and um, they will be thinking and... Uh, so how do we communicate with God? What do we call God when we communicate with God? What do we call it? See, so the child can uh, respond, one of them can say prayer and say, okay, good. Uh, so let's look further on how we communicate with God, okay? So that is one way that we can start the uh, 
topic and that is the attention getter. Another way that you can start the topic is, you know, um, uh, you can just uh, get uh, children, two children who do not know each other, you can get them to choose, you can get them to sit together, uh, give them a couple of minutes and tell them that, uh, you know, you have an activity and they have to just sit uh, with each other uh, and get to uh, speak to each other and get to know each other. So the children who choose who they do not know well, uh, they just sit and communicate. So this is also they learn to uh, talk, uh, moving, children who learn by moving, children who learn to uh, interpersonal uh, communication, uh, all of that will happen. So then after, you know, a couple of minutes, you can ask them, uh, how did you get to know the other person? So they say that, you know, I asked him or asked her a few questions um, and uh, they asked me a few questions. So he said, okay, good. Uh, so what did you do? Do you have to ask all the questions all the time? I say, no, we would uh, have to listen to the answer uh, to the questions uh, that the other person is sharing. And then you can say, good, did the other person listen to you when you were sharing? They say, yes. Uh, so you say, was communication complete? And they will say, maybe, yes. You know. So you're getting them to think, answer, and all of those things. And so you say that, you know, uh, the same is true when we talk with everybody, right? You keep on talking or do you, keep, you also listen as well. So we listen when you ask your teacher a question, a doubt. Do you listen when you ask your parents for uh, a question or doubt? Uh, do you listen to the answers? And they'll say, yes. So, uh, what about God? You know, when you talk to God, are you always talking? Do you listen to God? Um, so then you can ask them, what do we call talking and listening to God as? And they will say prayer. And then you can, you know, get them to, um, and then you can start on uh, talking about the topic prayer. So you can see you can use uh, these kind of attention getters. Uh, uh, you know, to get their, catch their attention. And once you catch their attention and they're excited, you know, they will kind of listen to the rest of the class. Okay. Uh, we'll continue um, uh, next Monday with, uh, uh, you know, about how to write a lesson plan and give you some more attention with us and then we'll um, move on. Okay. We'll end class here. Anyone has any questions, doubts? No? Okay, if not, uh, we'll end class here. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining. Have a good day. God bless all of you. Thank you.